Welcome to our homestead. Being self-sufficient means growing a lot of what you need to survive. And one of those things is growing plants which are medicinal in nature. Now there are a lot of plants which are medicinal in nature, but today we're gonna highlight the elderberry. We're gonna talk about how it grows and its health benefits. Let's get started. Elderberries are amazing, amazing plants. The berries are the thing we're gonna concentrate on today. In the past, people have used bark and other parts of the plant for medicinal purposes. I think the bark was used for a laxative, but you have to be careful with elderberry plants. For unripe berries, the stems, the leaves, things like that, they contain trace amounts of cyanide just like an apple seed. Now you're saying to me, wait a minute, no, apple seeds contain arsenic. Actually, that's not true, I thought that too, but they contain traces of cyanide. Also, a tiny bit of, tra a tiny trace of arsenic, but the husk around the seed contains cyanide. So let's talk about how elderberry plants grow. So first off, you can see that we've got two, we've got a little one over here that's not doing as well as this beautiful plant right here. These plants are only a year and a half old. So you can see the vigorous growth that elderberries actually put out. It's, it's fairly amazing. Now these elderberries are actually very easy to grow. They do love a very rich soil. So we are gonna be actually adding compost and some composted leaves today to the base around the plants. Now you can see on this one, the other ones have disappeared. We've added some mulched wood chips. Uh, we do that to try to keep the weed pressure down because these elderberries don't like the grasses and the weeds too much. So there are several different varieties of elderberries and you really wanna get ones that are self-pollinating, but it's always best to have more than one because even if they're self-pollinating, they can help and assist one another if you have more than just that one plant. Now it's recommended that you have your elderberry plants planted six to 10 feet apart. Ours are eight feet apart, so we're in that range. That is the best uh, spacing for them because they are such vigorous growers they can get out of hand pretty quick and I'll show you another reason why that happens. So on this plant you can see the original trunk from the elderberry uh, plant that we bought and you can see it's within our mole cage here we have a terrible mole problem but that has done well but like other berry plants kind of like raspberries the root stock is where your new shoots are gonna come up from. And new shoots come up all the time. You can see over here, outside of <laughs> our, uh, our cage here, all the way over to the side of our mound, we've got another elderberry uh, plant coming out from the rootstock. Here you can see our other plant, the originals, which are doing very well inside that mole cage that we built. We've got another one over here, about a foot and a half away. And it's roughly six feet tall. So just be mindful of that. Wherever you plant these, they are going to be incredibly vigorous, like I said, and start to grow very, very fast. And they will get out of your growing area, like raspberries, very fast. And you may have to prune them back and trim them back, back into the area of containment that you want them. So additionally, when you choose your elderberry plants, you wanna choose the ones that are of the Sambucus nigra varieties. Um, there's a lot of them, but they have, or they contain the blackberries. Those blackberries are the ones that are high in vitamin C, high in antioxidants, and those are the ones you can eat. Avoid the ones with the red berries altogether. And in fact, when you're harvesting these, you wanna get rid of and pick off the green berries if there are any, because those do contain those cyanide properties also. So let's talk about pruning with elderberries. Usually you don't have to prune an elderberry at all if you don't like, but you can just start pruning it after year three for shape. And anything before that, you don't really need to do because you want all that energy to go down into those roots and create the strongest possible root system that you can so that uh, they grow for a long time to come. So we're gonna add that compost that I talked about earlier. And we're just gonna add our raw compost. We don't have any 
uh, manure in this, but if you're using a manure compost, make sure it's already composted down and it's not hot at all. On top of our fully broken down compost, we also have some leaf mold compost. Now that isn't fully broken down and the reason I'm putting that on there is to also help with uh, water mitigation. So just like a wood chip, which you can add also, we like to add some partially composted leaves. Now the flower heads that form on these are where the berries form and they're actually very, very big. This is actually about half of what this flower head was. And this one plant had, I think, six of these flower heads on it. So it takes a little bit to get a decent amount of juice, but like I said, the vigorous growth of these is, will give you that amount of berries that you need for a decent amount of elderberry syrup, if you make that, um, in just a few years. So this video isn't necessarily about propagating these, but I'll give you a quick tip on propagating. It's super simple. You can take a cutting from an elderberry uh, trunk like this to four buds. So one, two, three, four. Cut it at a 45 degree angle, about halfway down from the fourth one. We're gonna plant it in the ground up until the second one. So only the top two are gonna be sticking out and it will root actually very fast. There's some videos out there that will show that and we will also make one in the future. Now elderberries are fairly drought resistant but if you can irrigate them I would because like in Texas here we've had we haven't had rain well it rained a tiny bit yesterday we haven't had rain in a few months. So elderberries are fairly shallow rooted so if you have really well draining soil that moisture is going to leave pretty quick and they're going to need to be watered so if you can irrigate them do it. So these amazing little berries are full of antioxidants which help remove free radicals from your body that boost your immune system. They're also super high in vitamin C which also helps boost your immune system. So this, the juice from this, or a lot of people make uh, a syrup with it, is something people use for uh, to combat the flu a lot. So it's also used to reduce inflammation, especially with like a breathing sickness, like a bronchitis. Uh, it'll reduce inflammation uh, anywhere in your body, but it's especially helpful for something like a chest cold or something like that. It also helps with fever and headaches and joint pain and also constipation, so don't take too much. The recommended dosage for an elderberry juice or syrup is just a tablespoon per day, unless you're sick and then they say that you can take up to three and that's for an adult dosage. Now today's video is not about how to make that elderberry syrup, but a really quick recipe for you, or a quick idea of the recipe, is to take a slow cooker or crock pot, take a couple pounds of frozen elderberries there, and that freezing will help break the cell walls of those elderberries, so they'll cook down quicker, and they'll release all of their juices without having to really mash them up too much. Uh, we'll put about a cup of water in the bottom, we're going to slow cook them for several hours, and then strain them through a nut milk bag. Now make sure you don't have any red or green berries mixed in there with them. Get those out first because they do contain that cyanide. Although it doses that small, it's not really going to hurt you, but it could upset your stomach, make you nauseous, and so on and so forth. So be safe and get those out of there ahead of time. Now we've already done videos on some other medicinal plants like garlic. We've shown you how to grow, harvest, cure garlic. So that is also a really, really powerful medicinal plant that you can grow on your homestead. And additionally, things like ginger, turmeric, cloves, echinacea, thyme, peppermint, hyssop, chamomile, all of those are incredible medicinal plants. And a lot of them are very interesting because they are uh, herbs that you would grow and cook with anyway, but they have amazing medicinal properties also. So I highly recommend that if you want to be more self-sufficient and get into homesteading that you start planting medicinal plants as well as plants uh, for food because they can help you out a lot in a tough situation. And as things get more scarce nowadays, I think it's probably a really good thing to do. Now, I want you to go check out this video right here, which shows you the Ellen White method of how to plant a tree, which will get you a strong, vigorous, beautiful tree faster than any other method. Have a great day. We love you. See you next time. Bye.